Bonds Barbershop Brands, Mike Taylor Education, the Great British Barber and Academy, and author of the Mike Taylor Education Resource Book. Been a barber for nearly 30 years, and I love it. Been teaching barbering for 15 years. So I've been around the circuit for a long time. And I absolutely love barbering. I love the trade, I love educating. So I really hope you've enjoyed this theory lesson and get what you need out of it. But if you don't, I'm the sort of guy I'm always happy to help. So drop me an email at info at miketaylereducation.com if there's any questions you need answered or anything you need to ask me at all. Anyway, enjoy the lesson. This theory lesson today is going to show you how to manage and create a collection of male images. This is what you need for your level four or your level three qualification. We will be going over everything to photographer, makeup artist, budget, how to plan it, how to use the models, how to get the best out of your collection. Learning outcomes. Be able to plan and research ideas to develop a theme of a male hairstyle collection. Be able to produce an action plan and project costs for the production of a male hairstyle collection. Be able to produce the final male style collection. This is what you will achieve in this unit. Planning. Collection opportunities. Raise profile. I think the best way to raise anyone's profile in the hair industry is by producing your work and producing a really good collection of images for people to see your work and see how great you are and to really showcase you onto another platform. Display work in magazines. Magazines don't want work that's been shot off a phone or amateurly shot. They want work that is perfection. And this is the best way by producing a proper collection to get your work showcased in a magazine. And when it is showcased in a magazine, this is not just great for the whole industry to see, your clients will appreciate this as well. Launching the season's next look. By doing a collection, it's your chance to think, right, what is up and coming? What do I see? It's pretty boring just doing a fade after fade after fade that's everyone's seen. It is your chance to really inspire and show the world, the country, what is coming out next. A lot of images can be displayed at hair shows, also used for competitions. And with competition work, for instance, the American Crew competition wants photos to be a certain way. And if you are gonna enter competitions, it's always best to use them from a proper collection. It will give you a much better chance of winning. The importance of planning. A detailed and accurate plan is vital to ensure that your photo shoot takes place without any complications or technical hitches. A design plan will take all of your initial ideas and concepts into a clear and accurate plan to move forward with your collection. A plan should cover everything from the hairstyle to the model, the venue to the additional media to be used, the budget to the people who will be involved. Remember, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Others involved. It is important that the people you give roles and responsibilities are suitable for the job. The person must be both willing to do the job and capable of doing the job. What we mean by this, as you can see, is we've got our fantastic photographer, Liam Oakes, in the picture and our fantastic makeup artist, Paula Griffin. It is worth investing in the best, in having the best photographers that know what they're doing, not just a mate with a camera, and also the best makeup artist or someone that knows a bit about makeup than just your mate that says, oh, I'll put a bit of makeup on. Because if you're putting a lot of planning, which you need to do into this photo shoot, it is not worth, it could make or break something if it's the wrong person used. And obviously budget will come into this, but that's where you need to step back and be strict with your photo shoot and only use the people that you know can deliver. Who is going to be involved? Photographer, line manager, makeup artists, colleagues, maybe a show audience, maybe competition judges, assessors, fashion designers, others involved. It's good practice to write down each job or job role for the photo shoot and a description of the roles and responsibility of that person. This means the person can see exactly what's expected of them and will help to avoid any misunderstandings. For instance, the photographer, Liam Oakes, 
his responsibilities to take photos subject to the theme and design plan. The role makeup artist, Paula Griffin, responsibilities to complete the makeup for the models to match the chosen theme and design. Now, where can you find your models? Right, let's go through this. On the street, pros, they're not in your friends group because it's quite hard to have the right models in your friends group. So you will see thousands and thousands of people on the street that could match the criteria you need. Cons, will they turn up? Friends, family, brilliant if you have got the exact look, but I wouldn't compromise my photo shoot by using anyone. Modeling agencies, pros, they will have the right model. Cons, it can be expensive. Social media. Again, pros, access to thousands and thousands of people, but cons, will they turn up? Word of mouth, pros, gets it out to thousands and thousands of people, but again, how well do you know them? Your clients, this one also, to me, is a very good pro, because not only if they've got the right look, you know their hair, you've cut it. And other classmates, if you're in the college, to me, sometimes younger people do photo better because of their bone structure. The one thing I always say when looking for models is be selective and really think it's not always the best looking people that photo really well. So maybe take a few like little shots of them and make sure they are comfortable in front of the camera and they're definitely gonna turn up and they definitely wanna do this as much as you want them to do it for you. Venue. When considering venues for a collection, there may be restrictions of what you cannot be done. For example, the venue may have specific opening hours. There may be health and safety requirements. If outside, you need to consider sunlight and weather. What techniques are you going to use? You won't have to use all of these techniques, but here's a list of techniques that you should be thinking of and should be trying to use at least four of these. Cutting, shaving, hair patterns, hair art, perming, relaxing, straightening, colouring, styling and dressing, adding hair, plaiting, twisting, locking. Like I say, with men's collections on general, we would use cutting, beards, maybe patterns, maybe colouring. So not so many of the others, but really try and think to use as much other techniques as you can in your shoot to make it more interesting. What additional media will you be using? Accessories, like hat, walking stick, phone, cigarette, car, chair, etc. Clothes, makeup. So always think of that. It makes the shoot a lot more interesting. Even if you've got someone with a pocket watch, for example, or a razor, or a different tie. Always think of something that you can add as an accessory to your shoot. Now you've got to look for a design idea. It's always good to brainstorm loads and loads of different ideas, but try and pick something that you've got a passion for. Because like here, you know, Pac-Man, the 1980s, Street Fighter, they're all like arcade games, really cool. Or you've got football, Olympics, sport, rock and roll, the great Gatsby, skateboarding, Peaky Blinders, 1920s and 1930s and 1970s. Just try and think of as many ideas that inspires you and then pick one to think, right, that's what I'm aiming at. Because there's nothing worse than a collection that's really not going anywhere without a theme. Once you've decided on your theme, you must now create a mood board. A mood board helps you create a visual reference to show people what you are talking about. A mood board can be done on paper or on a computer. Don't over cramp your mood board. Too many ideas can be confusing. Keep to one idea or theme. Don't just include pictures of hair. Think about clothing, accessories, colors, textures where it's going to take place. Everything about your shoot should be included in this mood board. And make sure what is on your mood board actually relates to what you're creating in your photo shoot. Budget. When setting your budget, the most important thing is to be reasonable and realistic. Work out what you can afford and research into costs and resources. Make a list of what you have to pay for and what you could pull in favours from friends and family. And remember, if you are on the level four course, 
we've already paid for a makeup artist. We have Liam doing your photos and I am on hand to take any questions. So your budget has been catered for. All you've got to worry about is your models. Example photo shoot. Final theme idea. This was mine, Street Fighter. I had a big passion for Street Fighter growing up. I loved playing the game. I think it's one of the best arcade games around and I thought I could really make an exciting photo shoot with this concept. So as you can see, my mood board. I've got the four characters, Ryu, Ken, Guile, and Zandif that I wanted to achieve. And if you look at it, there's different bits of clothes, different um, media I'm using, like the necklace with the dog tags. If you look all through my mood board to what I'm gonna create, you'll think that's exactly what is on point. With my models, these were all local guys. So with Ken, I found Ken on Facebook through friends and he didn't mind having his hair a little bit shorter. He was ideal because he does a bit of modeling anyway. So he was okay in front of the camera. I made sure I'd called him up a few times to make sure he was definitely gonna turn up because there was a lot of investment from me to do this photo shoot. And then if we go to the top right, we've got Dan, who's a friend of mine. I work with doing certain bits of, of photography with, and he was ideal for me with Guile. And I knew he'd be comfortable in front of the camera and I spoke to him about having his hair colored and straightened and he was happy to do so. Ryu was done on the left-hand side by my colleague, fellow barber, Lee. I knew that Lee would be brilliant in front of the camera and he's got really good hair and would turn up and be a reliable model. So that's why I picked him for this character. The last but not least character is one of my clients I do a flat top on called Lee and he was absolutely brilliant. I asked him if he'd grow a beard for me and if I could shave his hair into a Mohican, which he agreed. He got permission from his wife, but there you go. All four of my models for Street Fighter was not paid for, but they were well researched by myself and I was 100% sure each of them was gonna be okay in front of the camera and they were all gonna turn up. So as you can see, the first picture is Guyo Dan, Brilliant, you can see that I've um, colored his hair, shaped it all in, you can see the detail around the edging, which I wanted to show out, because also I didn't just want to create a collection of street fire, I wanted to show my barbering and showcase what I could do. I straightened his hair and brought it straight on. So this is quite avant-garde, it's not what you'd see on the street. Next, we've got Zangief Lee, which he grew his beard for me. It was a lot of gray in the beard, so I colored that in, so make it nice and dark and all one color, and then done like a psycho Billy quiff flat top mohawk on there and cutthroat razored the whole of his hair off, again, showcasing my barbering skills. Next, we have Ken. What I'd done with him was cut his hair off and colored it blonde. So if you think I, it was foiled all the way through, but I didn't do this color, I used a colleague of mine. So again, there's nothing wrong with you using different colleagues on your shoot to help with different parts. Because if you feel that someone else is stronger than you at certain aspects, it's always good to get help. A photo shoot doesn't have to be completely all of your own work, you can bring in colorists or permis if needed. And last but not least, we have Lee, which was just a classic fade, French crop, just basic traditional sort of barbering with him, but dressed up as Ryo. Now you can see what we done with it. The photographer did a bit of photo art, how cool the background looks, and the verses looks like it does actually on the computer screen. It was the front cover of the March 2020 issue of the Barber magazine. And I think it looks brilliant. And they agreed it was one of the best issues that they had ever produced. And they got a lot of good feedback from it. Also with this collection, as well as it featuring other magazines such as Barber Evo, it's got to the final of the men's collection of the year of the National Hairdressing Federation. It was in the final three, it didn't win. I think it should have done, but that's how far this collection has gone.
So after the photo shoot, you need to evaluate. Did the photo shoot go as planned? What went well? Not so well. How successful were the photographs? What would you do differently if you did it again? Did you feel the location was appropriate? Was there any problems or technical issues?